Hi, this is Reverend Jesse W. Plater. I'm the senior pastor of the Alexander Memorial Baptist Church located in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. I wanna thank you for worshiping with us today via Facebook or YouTube. We have put together some selections from our choir and our worship service for your enjoyment. Afterwards, I will return with a word from God entitled, It's Not Time Yet. We pray that you will be blessed, encouraged, and of course, challenged by the word of God. So go ahead and sit back and get ready. And while you're waiting, go ahead and share this service on your timeline. God bless you, and I'll see you when I get back. don't mind if you could rest on your feet as we go over our morning scripture I will recite and you repeat after me 
Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endured to all generations. If you believe that, give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you for another opportunity to give your name the praise, the glory, and honor that it's due. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for any and everything. And also, God, we ask for your forgiveness. Anything that we know that we know we've done and anything we don't know that we've done that's unpleasing to you. God, we ask that you remove it from us and create in us a clean heart and a renewed spirit. In addition to a renewed spirit, God, we ask for your provision over our lives. Whatever need that we have, we place them at your feet and we walk away knowing that it's already done. Because if you've done it before, you'll do it again. So whether it's a concern that's needing healing, protection, uh, provision, whether it's a need for uh, deliverance from temptation, whether it's um, your love, your encouragement, whatever it is, God, we know that it's already done. And we also pray for the word that is about to come forth. Let it also be pleasing in your sight and let it also encourage us to change to be transformed according to your will and according to your way so that we can up walk upright so that we can think better be better and live better jesus in your name we pray amen good morning and thank you for joining us for worship at the alexander memorial baptist church here are your announcements and events for this week the journey of hope cancer support ministry conference call will be held on monday night at 7 p.m. Our adult Bible study will be held on Tuesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Our Youth Hot Topic small group virtual meeting will be held on Thursday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And on Friday, May 22nd, our Young Adult Friday Night Live Bible study will be held at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Conference call and Zoom link information can be found online on our website at www.alexandermemorial.org. As a reminder, tithes and offerings can be submitted using the church website at alexandermemorial.org or on the GiveLify mobile app. Download the GiveLify mobile app and look for the Alexander Memorial Baptist Church of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Also, tithes and offerings can be mailed to the church at 10675 Crane Highway in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning right here at Alexander Memorial Baptist Church, where Reverend Jesse W. Plater is our senior pastor.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for that wonderful selection from our choir. We give God praise, we give him glory today for this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And so just put your hands together this morning and give God some praise in the house. Somebody shout hallelujah, glory to his name. We thank you, oh God, in our homes, oh God. We, we just praise you for being able to come together and to worship your holy name. Amen, amen. Today, I would like to share with you out of the book of Ecclesiastics, the third chapter um, using verse number one. It says, to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven. Amen. We're going to just focus on this particular scripture for our reading. Amen. As we examine this particular chapter, let's seek God in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for your word in advance. We thank you for the opportunity, God, to be able to worship you, God. And so speak to our hearts and our minds, our souls and our spirit, oh God, that we would be hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus name, we say amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Today, I would like to use for my title, It's Not Time Yet. It's Not Time Yet. And so the writer of our text is King Solomon, the son of King David. And, and Solomon at this stage in his life is no longer a young man. He, he's an elderly man and, and he has learned some lessons from life. How many know if you live long enough, you'll learn a few things about life. And, and Solomon shares with us here in this text, he, he tells us, he said, to everything there is a season, amen? And one thing I discovered about seasons is that they all have a start time and they all have a finish time, amen? And the truth of the matter is you can't control either one of them, only God can. And, and so Solomon, he shares with us that I've I gone through some things, I've seen some things, I have experienced some things, and, and, and here's what he shares with us. Again, he said, to everything, everything, no matter what it is, there is a season and a time assigned to it and it has a purpose amen uh, no, no matter what you're going through in life no matter what the challenge is uh, Solomon said I, I, I learn and I can share with you that that there's not always gonna be good days but sometimes there are gonna be some bad ones also and, and and he tells us there are some mountaintops experiences but there's also some valleys and and there's some Sometimes when the sun may shine and then there may be some times where you have dark clouds. Help, help me somebody. He said there, there's a time to be able to love and he said then there's a time when you have to deal with hate. Uh, he, he goes down the line and, and he begins to share. He, he says there's a time to sow and then there's a time to reap the harvest. Uh, how many know in life, amen, that everything is a season and every season has its purpose. And, and so Solomon tries to encourage us as we look at the text, amen, to, to get us to see and prepare ourselves and understand that no matter what you may be going through now, uh, somebody can shout, it's only a season. Huh? I don't know about you, but that's kind of encouraging because when you think about it, when he says that it's a season, that means that it's not going to last forever. In other words, this situation that we find ourselves in even right now, no matter how difficult it is, I, I come to tell you that you're going to be all right, that you're going to make it through this because trouble don't last always. Even trouble have to live in the bubble of a season. Even trouble have time assigned to it. And so no matter how difficult it is, you can take courage today that is only a season. And so when I look at our text and I look at this word season in, in time, another word comes to mind. Huh? I, I find the word wait. It's a four letter word, just the word wait. Huh? How many know that the word wait means delay? It, it means to um, stay put or, or it means to pause. And, 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 and so he, he's saying in a season that, that we might find ourselves in now. Huh? How many know that we have to learn how to wait 
on God. We can't change our season. We can't speed it up and we can't slow it down. It has a time assigned to it. And so we have to learn how to wait. Anybody this morning waiting right now? Anybody this afternoon going to wait? How many going to wait tonight? Tell somebody I'm in a waiting kind of season. I'm just waiting on God. I understand that I'm at this place called pause. I can't move forward and I can't go back. So I'm just going to wait on God. And most of us have a problem with this thing called wait. We don't like to wait on anything. We don't like to wait on anyone. Matter of fact, we don't like anyone telling us what to do. Or oh, hear me somebody. So, so we struggle with this word wait because we like to be in control. In fact, we like to be in control so much that we have a problem waiting on God. Sometimes we feel like he's moving too slow because he's not moving at my pace. He's not moving as fast as I want him to. We live in a world where everything is quick and it's in a hurry and I gotta have it right now. But every now and then, God will take us to a place, a place called wait. How many know we have to learn how to wait on him? We have to remember that, that he said there's a season and there's a time and a purpose. I come to realize that the word purpose and time is like a married couple. Whenever one show up, how many know the other one is somewhere near? You can tell your neighbor this time that I'm in, this period that I'm in, my purpose is right behind it. That's good news today. Somebody ought to give God praise. Waiting means that it's not my will, but it's God's will. How many know you have to wait on God? You have to hold on. You got to keep on trusting. I come to realize that the real challenge we have with waiting, come on somebody, and waiting for God's timing is that we want to do what we want to do. We don't really like spending time with God. I've been talking to folks during this pandemic and I'm discovering that people are having a challenge being shut in. But how many know God said this is the season to be shut in? Help me somebody. And so they're struggling with being in the house. But how many know we have an opportunity to take advantage of being shut in? How many know it's just all in how you look at it? You're not looking at it right. Some people worried about they focus is on what's happening outside. But God said, I got you a place now. I have you in a place now where I'm shutting things down. I'm bringing you to a quiet place. I'm bringing you to a place where you can spend time with me. And how many know for some folks, that's a little irritating because when you spend time with God, it's not on your time, but it's based on his time. Oh, somebody ought to help me right now. How many know we need to stay in place? I know what they're saying. They say you can go out now. But God said it's not time yet. Anybody going to wait on them this morning? Anybody going to wait on them right now? Tell somebody, I'm going to wait on God. I'm not going to worry about what other people are doing. I'm not going to listen to what other people are saying. But I'm going to trust in God. Oh, I hear you this morning. I hear you right now. Somebody said, I'm tired of waiting. The president and the governor said, they're going to lift the stay at home order. They say, we can go out now. We can open things back up. But tell somebody, God said, it's not time yet. You ought to hear me right now. Many people are busy listening to what the president say, listening to what the government said, uh, listening to the governors and the mayors. Uh, ah, but I come by to tell you, uh, are you listening to what they're not saying? Uh, 
Y'all better hear me. What I discovered about politics is not about what they say, but what's important is what they don't say. Y'all better hear me right now. We're told by the president, they used to say that we need to do testing. That testing was essential in order for us to get control of the situation. But now we've been told we don't need testing anymore. We can just go ahead and open up. We can go back to the place called normal. I said, it's not about what they say. It's about what they don't say. They're trying to encourage you. Go ahead out now. Take your stimulus check and your unemployment check. And you can go ahead and spend your money. Help me somebody. How many know they want you to spend your money on people in things that don't look like you? With people that don't live in your neighborhood. You ought to hear me somebody. I wonder is the people that's going out are they the ones with preconditions? Y'all better hear me right now. Who are they talking to? Who are they sending out? They saying go to the barber shop. Go get a fresh cut. They say go to the beauty parlor. The beauty shop. Go get your nails done. Go get your manicures and your other cures. The pedicure. Whatever your cure. They say just go get it done. Go on to the beaches. Go on to the parks. Go on to the restaurants. Go ahead and enjoy yourself. But I come by to tell you. They say spend your money. But do you know what they're not saying? Why are they stopping the testing after they're lifting the order? Somebody ought to think about it. Say yes, somebody. Let me pause for the cause. Maybe I ought to wait a moment before I go out the door. Before I start spending my money with people who don't care about me. Somebody ought to say yes. I need to hold up. I need to stop for a moment. I need to pause. I need to think about what they're not saying. Because how many know he said to everything there is a season. And this is the coronavirus season. I don't care what somebody else tell you. The virus is still real. It's still active. God says it's not time to go out yet. How many know you need to think about this thing? You need to stop for a moment and consider what's not being said. You need to hold up for a second. Do they have your best interests at heart? Are they worrying about you? Have they, do they value your life? You ought to hear me. Or do they value your money? Help me somebody. Maybe they want to stop testing because if you don't test, you don't know how many people are being infected. And then you don't know how many dying from the infection. I tell somebody, I know they told us to wear masses over our face, over our mouth and our nose, but they didn't tell you to wear it over your eyes. Tell somebody, you need to take the mask off so you can see what's really happening. Tell somebody, it's time to wait upon the Lord. How many know God knows that everything has a purpose? And I ain't going nowhere until God said it's time. Tell somebody, I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to stay on the inside. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to spend more time with God. I'm going to take advantage of this quiet time and learn me some scriptures. Sing me some song up my worship. Meditate more on the things of God. I'm going to wait on him because I know in due season at the appointed time, how many know that God is going to release us? He's going to open things back up again. Somebody ought to say yes. Tell somebody. Tweak somebody. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going outside. But I'm going to stay inside. I'm going to keep on waiting. 
I'm going to keep trusting my Lord and my Savior, the one who cares about me, huh? the one who loves me, huh? the one who shows that and, and, and consider my value. Huh? Anybody going to wait? Huh? Uh, anybody going to wait this morning? Huh? Shout if you're going to wait. Huh? Somebody shout, wait. Huh? No matter what you do, just wait on God. Huh? But secondly, hmm, as I look here huh, at this text, huh, it's a short text, huh, but it's saying a whole lot. Huh? My next point is I'm going to listen. Tell somebody I'm going to listen. Huh? Now, I'm just like everyone else. Huh? I'm tired of being inside too. Huh? I like to be able to get out. Huh? I like to be able to go hug my children. Huh? To be able to go and barbecue and, and be able to go to dinner with them and to be able to get back in church huh, with my brothers and sisters. Huh? To be able to sit back and chill huh, with my friends. Huh? I, I want to go out too. Huh? Especially I need to go get huh, a fresh cut too. Huh? But tell somebody, huh? I ain't going nowhere. Huh? I'm going to wait on God. Huh? I'm going to listen for God. Huh? Because God is saying huh, this is the season huh, for COVID-19. Huh? And it's not over yet. Huh? Don't listen to what man says. Huh? You better listen to me. Huh? Because I have your best interest huh, at heart. Tell somebody this is the season huh, to stay home. Huh? You must be honest with yourself. Huh? Why aren't you taking advantage huh, of this quiet time? Huh? Why aren't you spending more time with God? Huh? Help me somebody. Huh? Why you're struggling huh, with this time huh, that you should be spending with God? Huh? Why is such a problem? Huh? You have to ask yourself. Huh? How come I can't be patient to wait for God? Huh? How come I want to run out huh, and do what everybody else do? Huh? How come I'm in such a hurry to do what I want to do, to, to go where I want to go, uh, to say what I want to say and, and stay out as long as I want to stay out? How many know uh, I need to listen to the voice of God? Uh, I need to listen uh, to the voice of reason. Uh, so many people uh, have become anxious uh, and they said they're bored uh, about being in the house. Uh, ah, y'all don't hear me. Uh, yet we haven't learned one single scripture uh, the whole time we've been in the house. Uh, we haven't given God uh, none of our time uh, since this lockdown, uh, since this shut-in. Uh, we still been ignoring uh, the spirit of God. Uh, having listened uh, to his voice, uh, I used to say, uh, oh pastor, uh, I wish I could come uh, to Bible study, uh, but I get off work too late. Uh, by the time uh, I get through the traffic, uh, it's too late now. Uh, but I come by to tell you, uh, to remind you, uh, we don't have traffic no more. Uh, you don't have to go to work no more. Uh, now all you have to do uh, is roll over in the bed uh, and you can join Bible study. Uh, or you can go downstairs and, and, and sit on your comfortable couch. Uh, and all you have to do is just connect. Uh, help me somebody uh, just push the link button huh, and you can connect with us huh. ah, help me somebody huh. somebody say I hate huh, sitting in traffic huh. I used to hate huh, riding the metro huh. help me somebody huh. but now all I have to do huh, is walk in another room huh. all I have to do uh, is walk downstairs huh. and don't you know huh, some folks are still late for work huh. oh God is trying to tell uh, somebody something uh, are you listening uh, I remember saying uh, I wish I could telework uh, but now I can uh, help me somebody uh, I don't have to spend the money uh, that I used to spend uh, my gas lasts uh, two to three times longer uh, help me somebody uh, don't have to put my clothes uh, in the cleaners no more mm, don't have to pay extra for lunch uh, help me somebody uh, anybody know 
know that things are better now. Matter of fact, I can get up and don't even have to change my clothes. I can keep my sleeping clothes on and work all day. Is there anybody in here still complaining? You got it better than you did before. You got what you asked for, but now you're complaining. But I come by to tell somebody, you need to hear what the voice of God is saying. You need to listen because God is trying to get your attention. I come by to tell you, there's somebody else wish they were you. There's somebody right now, they've been let go. They're now unemployed. They're trying to get an unemployment check. They're trying to get through the line to put in their application. There's somebody that wish they had a job and and don't mention telework and and you there complaining uh, about your convenience uh, or y'all miss that. Uh, Somebody thought I said inconvenience. Uh, I said you complaining uh, about your convenience uh, and somebody else uh, wish they were you. Uh, I tell somebody uh, I'm going to put myself in check. Uh, I'm going to get myself together. Uh, I'm going to stop complaining uh, because I got better. Uh, I got it better uh, than so many other folks. I could be I could be the one out there that don't have a job that, that's wondering how I'm going to make it but I got a check coming in God is meeting all of my needs I'm going to shut my mouth I'm going to stop complaining I'm going to get myself together I'm going to spend more time with you God God I repent of that complaining spirit and God I'm going to thank you for what you're doing for for me. Thank you for the time you're giving me to be able to be with my family. Stop complaining about the noise the children making. Stop complaining because they home now. I got more time to be able to do my job and have less stress. Got more time to be with Johnny and Susie. Say yes somebody. Good news. I'm going to listen to you God. I'm I'm going to take advantage. Uh, God, I know you've been trying to tell me something. Uh, and so I'm going to get it together. Uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, and as I continue uh, to look at this text, uh, I find there's one more point. Uh, y'all got time? Uh, can I share with you this one last one? I see the word purpose. Uh, he said to every time there's a season. Uh, and to every time there is a purpose. Uh, how many know that God still have a purpose for you. Somebody ought to say thank you. You still have a purpose for me. Even though I haven't done all that I should. Even though I got caught up in complaining and I got a little lazy. I didn't worship you and I didn't pray to you like I should. You still have a plan for me. Or Somebody ought to give him a wave offering. God I thank you. I bless your name because Jeremiah 2911 huh, tell somebody it's still good huh, even in 2020 huh, in the midst huh, of a pandemic huh, God says huh, I still huh, have a plan for you huh. I don't know about you huh, but trouble huh, you're gonna have to leave me alone huh. problems huh, get out of my way because huh, my God huh, he still huh, have a plan for me huh. I got good news news, even in the midst of a pandemic situation, even in the midst of being in a stay in place order, I still found some good news from God that he still have a plan for me, a plan that I would prosper, that there would be no harm that would come to me. Thank you, Jesus, for you are my covering. You cover me and you've been covering my family. You didn't just start doing it, but you've been doing it for a mighty long time. And I need to take out time to say thank you for being my covering God. Say yes, somebody. He said, I still have a plan for you that you would prosper and still have hope. And not only have hope, but you got a future. Tell somebody that's
that's good news because that lets me know that I'm going to make it through this season because I still, I still have a future. God said I still have hope and tell somebody I still got joy. I still can bless the name of the Lord this day. Somebody ought to say yes. But God says, how many know that God can use anything in anybody and tell somebody he can work it out for my good and for your good. How many know that God is going to take this pandemic and he still have a purpose to work it out for something good? Somebody ought to say yes. Our first lady and I was thinking about just the other day. We reflected back and we remember the last Sunday that we all was able to come together in this facility, help me, for worship. It was Sunday, March the 8th, 2020, help me. And we celebrated my 14th pastor anniversary. Oh, y'all help me today. And First Lady said, I wonder if we knew that that would be our last Sunday for a long time to be able to come together in worship, in fellowship, in this one place. Would we have done anything different? And I said, yes, I'm sure if we knew that that would be the last time for a long time, we would have done some things differently. Somebody out there, if you knew that was the last time, you would have went some places different. You would have stopped by somebody's house and gave them a hug and said, I love you. Somebody ought to say yes. But I told her, no matter how much we thought about it, we still couldn't imagine that things would be the way they are. Help me somebody. We were watching one of our preachers that we enjoy on the television. And the camera zoomed out across and saw the audience. And everybody was all together. Giving each other high fives. And some was hugging one another. And some was shouting glory. And somebody said hallelujah. All of this was pre-corona. Help me somebody. But how many know in the midst of corona. Now they say instead of coming together. We got to be six feet apart from one another. Instead of being able to shout freely. Help me somebody. Now we have to wear masses across our mouth. Tell somebody things can change. Help me. Just like that. I come to realize we have to appreciate every single moment because you don't know how long it's going to last and you don't know how soon things can change from one state to another state. Help me somebody. I say yes. Even the church have changed from what's happening now. I say yes somebody. It used to be a time that people was excited about the choir. Help me. About the musicians. Say yes somebody. And they gave the word minimal attention. But I come by to tell you things are changing. There's a new excitement about the word of God. Say yes somebody. I like to hear a good song. I love good music. I love to hear the organ play in the keyboard. I like the sound of the guitar. 
in the beat of the drum, but I come to a place where if I don't have all of that, as long as I got the word, I know it's gonna be all right. Somebody ought to say yes, give me a word in this season for disappointed time. I need a word, Pastor. Somebody ought to say yes. I say yes, somebody. I'm looking at how things have changed. It used to be a time when I stood behind this podium and I was able to look out and see smiling faces responding back to me. But we're in a new season, a season called virtual. I'm still behind the podium. And when I look out, I don't see anyone. So I have to imagine what you look like. God has given me the ability to be able to look and see into your house and be able to see your face. Say yes, somebody, and still preach a word from God. Somebody ought to say thank you for the word. Tell somebody there's a new season. There's a new norm. People want to rush back. I want to get back to a place called normal. But I come to tell you that place, it don't exist anymore. God has a new normal. Somebody ought to say yes. I come to tell you that God is doing something in this season. He's up to something. I can sense a move from God. How many can tell he's up to something? Things are changing. I remember that sometimes life can be like somebody driving down the highway. You're driving on a bumpy road and your focus is on how bumpy the road is. But how many know you can miss out on, on all the beauty uh, that's surrounding you uh, because your focus uh, is on the bumps. Uh, we're living in this time uh, where our focus uh, is on the bumps. Uh, how bad it is. Uh, how troubling it is. Uh, how much we're going through. Uh, uh, how much we don't have. Uh, but I come by to tell you uh, the road is bumpy uh, but God is doing something. Uh, something beautiful. Uh, something beautiful uh, is going to happen uh, out of all of this. Uh, tell somebody uh, don't focus on the bumps because uh, if you know anything uh, if you're on a bumpy road uh, if you just keep going forward uh, how many know uh, sooner or later uh, I'm going to get off this road uh, and I'm going to get on a smooth highway. Uh, tell somebody uh, this too going to pass. Uh, things going to change but I got to wait on God. I have to listen to him. And my purpose is still active. God going to take me into my promised land, into my place of purpose. I don't know about you, but whatever God is doing in this season, somebody ought to say, don't do it without me. Bishop Paul Morton, he he used to sing that song. He used to sing, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me. Lord, if you're blessing in this season, please, Lord, don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing in this season, whatever you do, God, don't do it without me. Do I have a witness that can say right now, Lord, don't do 
do it. Don't do it, Lord, without me. I want to be a part of whatever you're doing. Do it, God, but don't do it without me. Somebody ought to say thank you. Somebody ought to give him praise because he is. He's doing something and you got the opportunity to be a part of whatever whatever he's doing. And I come by to tell you he's doing something right now. Thank you God that whatever you're doing that you're doing it and I'm a part of it. Somebody ought to give him praise. I'm stop complaining and I'm going to praise you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to thank you because whatever you're doing you're not going to do it without me. If I'm talking about you then go ahead and praise him and go ahead and give him glory and go ahead and shout and go ahead and thank him. Oh give him a wave offering. Go ahead and put running in your step. Go ahead and move and act like he's doing something in your life. Anybody here, anybody out there can say he's doing something in my life. I don't know what it's all about. I don't know when it's going to be finished. But whatever it is, God don't do it without me. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Somebody shout glory. Shout hallelujah. Because he's doing something. And he's not going to do it without me. Oh, bless his wonderful name. He says to everything, there is a season. And to every time, there is a purpose. I come to tell you, this season that you're in, it has a purpose. Hallelujah. You are going to come out on the other side. God still has great things for you. He's going to take care of you in the midst of this season. And so instead of the eyes of complaining, instead of wearing the mask, take it off and let's begin to listen to what God is saying, to wait on him, knowing that he has a purpose for this and everything that happens. The good news is that whatever he's doing, you get to be a part of it. I get to be a part of it. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you for using me, for allowing me to be a part of this season. I want to take the time in case we have someone that's listening today that have not invited Jesus into your heart. You haven't accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Out of all the things I said, if you don't take the time to do that, you're going to miss out on your season. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the grave, you shall be saved. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I recognize that I need you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died for my sins on Calvary's cross. I believe that you was buried in a borrowed tomb and early Sunday morning, God raised you from the grave with all power in your hand. And so I confess you to the world as my Lord and Savior. And I receive you in my heart and I thank you for my salvation. We love you, God. We thank you. We praise you. If you have backslidden, it's not too late. You too can return on back to the Lord for his arms are wide open. God bless you. I pray that you have been encouraged by this word today from our service today. No matter what happens, remember, we have to wait on God. Never move unless God says that it's time. And right now he's saying it's not time yet. Have a blessed day and may heaven continue to smile upon.